Hello again and welcome back. By now, we have learned most of the essentials of modeling uh, geometry of our structure uh, in Stat Pro. However, we have not discussed about one essential specification that is needed for modeling, which we will do in this episode. But before we do that, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button so that you can join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Stat Practically all structures are three dimensions and we would need to evaluate the deformation of the structure in all the six degrees of freedom. But there can be simplified cases where we can represent and evaluate the structure in two dimensional plane. We would use the concepts of in plane degree of freedom and out of plane degrees of freedom extensively in this episode. So if you have any doubts on that, I would request you to go back to video 11 to refresh the concepts on this. Now let us consider a simply supported dream structure. So we have a member 1 that has been formed between nodes 1 and nodes 2. Now let the, both the nodes have pin support. Now you may remember what our pin support is. If not, please refresh the concept about it that we have discussed in video number 10. So, in pin supports, the nodes are constrained against translation in all the three directions, but they are free to rotate about all the three axes. Now, let us consider these two cases. Now, First is case 1, where let us have a point load at the center of the beam. What's the meaning of a point load? Let this point load be P. Now, what is the meaning of a point load? A point load is a load that is applied at one single point. And this is a vertical point load that has been applied in the minus y direction. Now, what will happen to this P? Now, as a response, this node 1 will undergo a clockwise rotation like this. And node 2 will undergo an anti-clockwise rot rotation like this. So, because of this rotation, the beam would deflect like this. So this is the deflection pattern of the beam that I am trying to represent using the dotted line. Now, what is it that we see in this beam? We see that the geometry of this beam is represented in this xy plane. The loading on the beam is represented in this xy plane and even the response of this p is loaded or is being is can be represented in the xy plane so all of this can be represented in the xy plane so what are the three things that i mentioned the geometry of the beam this can be represented in the xy plane the loading on the beam can be represented in the xy plane and the response of the beam, the deflection of the beam, you can draw the response of the beam in the xy plane. So the response of the beam, the response against the load can be represented in the xy plane. So the nodes 1 and 2 has rotated. The response of the nodes is rotation and these have rotated in the theta z direction. So this node would rotate uh, in the, both of these nodes would rotate in the theta z direction. Now you may remember that the theta z is an in-plane degree of freedom. Now we'll talk about another case. Case number two is the same beam that can be 
represented in this xy plane. So the geometry is represented in the xy plane. And but this beam is loaded in the negative direction of the z axis. Now you may remember what is the positive direction of z axis. So if this is x, this is y, the right hand thumb rule would give you x to y, the thumb would point towards you in this direction. So the, uh, the z direction, the positive direction of z direction comes out of the board towards you, towards the camera. Now <clears throat> here what I am saying is that the load is being applied in the negative direction of the z-axis. So if this is the point load, the point load is acting on the beam like this. Now, we cannot represent this point load, we cannot represent the loading of the beam in the xy plane. And also, just think about how this beam would deform. What would be the rotation of this node? Now this node should as a response to this particular load, these nodes would rotate about the y-axis like this, like this. So this will represent in the positive direction about the y-axis and this would, this would rotate in the negative direction about the y-axis. Remember that the positive direction is determined by the direction the curl of these fingers if the thumb is pointing towards the positive direction of y-axis. So this node will rotate like this. So this is the y-axis, this node will rotate like this. So it, it rotates in the positive direction of the, above the positive direction of the y-axis and this node would represent or would rotate in the negative direction about the y-axis. So the rotation of these two nodes would be theta y. Now remember that this was theta z which was in plane degree of freedom. Remember our discussion from uh, our, one of our past videos and theta y is an out of plane deformation. It's an out of plane deformation. So the beam would be bending like this. So if this is the beam then the beam would bend like this like this. So that would mean that I cannot represent the response of the beam in this xy plane or in this board. Now this xy plane is the is the board. Now though we see here that we can represent the geometry of this beam in the xy plane, we cannot represent the loading or the response in this particular plane. So This, in case of case 1, where the geometry, the loading and the response can be described in a single xy plane is called plane structures in stair terminology. But the beam where the geometry, loading and response cannot be represented in a single xy plane is called, cannot be called as a plane structure, I'm sorry, it cannot be called as a plane structure, so you have to consider this structure type as space. So case 1 can be a plane structure where you do not need to consider the out of plane degrees of freedom in case of these structures. But in this, in case of this structure, you need to consider the out of plane degrees of freedom. So in case one is a plane structure where the geometry loading and response can be represented in a single xy plane and case two needs, should be called as a space structure because the geometry though can be represented in the xy plane loading and response cannot be represented in the xy plane. So the, the all the geometry loading and response cannot be described in a single xy plane. Those structures should be called space structures. Now let us consider, reconsider case number two. Now we said that the load 
the point load would be acting in the negative direction of the z-axis. Now think of a situation where we are viewing this beam from the top, that is from the direction of positive y. So we have our eyes are like this. Our so let this be our eyes. So our eyes are like this, and we are looking in this direction. So think that we are looking at this beam from the top. So we will actually see the x-axis like this and we will see the z-axis like this. See we won't in this in that case we won't see the the y-axis. Now we will see the beam from the top like this and we will see that the load is applied in this direction as load P and these are the nodes which would be pinned and these nodes would be rotated, rotating in the theta y direction so the response of the beam can be drawn in the exact plane. Now one may argue that how about this? We can represent this geometry, the same beam, we can represent the, <clears throat> the geometry, the loading and the response in the single XZ plane. Though we cannot represent it in the XY plane, we can represent that in a single XZ plane. So, from the structural mechanics point of view, this is an in-plane situation. We can describe the geometry loading and response in the same plane, though it's not the xy plane but the xz plane, but we can still represent that in the same plane. So, why are we calling this structure then a space? Well, remember that in STAD terminology, an in plane situation is only when you can draw the geometry loading and response in a single xy plane. So, a situation that is in plane in any other plane, like the XZ plane or the YZ plane, won't be considered in plane. They would be considered as out of plane. So in those situations, we have to consider that as a space structure. Stand by default considers a structure as a space structure and it solves for all the six degrees of freedom. You may not appreciate this at this point if you are at the starting point of your undergraduate course. But it would be enough to know for now that STAD employs something called the direct stiffness method in solving structures, where the unknowns are displacements. So that is why you do need to solve for the displacement or deformation of the structure. Now, in case of a space structure, STAD would solve for all the six degrees of freedom. However, there can be cases where the loading and the results and even the geometry could be represented in a single plane. So solving for the additional out of plane degrees of freedom would just result in an extra computational cost with no value. So it would be logical to define these structures as plane structures. The command to represent a plane structure in STAD in the text format is called STAD plane. And the command to describe a space structure is called STAD space, though that is the default consideration in STAD. So if you actually get into a STAD file, you will see that it has by default considered the structure as STAD space. So you have to overwrite the space for plane in case it's a plane structure. Now, <coughs> what happens when you specify a structure as that plane. So again, let us consider the same beam that we have been discussing with two nodes, one and two. And these two nodes are joined by a member one. 
and of course there are pin supports as I have said that has been applied to the nodes. Now as soon as you specify <coughs> the structure as stat plane, stat would apply automatically apply or automatically apply restraints in the outer plane degrees of freedom. Now remember that this node the translational degrees of freedom are what? Delta X for this node, delta Y for this node and delta Z for this node. Rotational degrees of freedom are theta X, theta Y and theta Z. And the, tra the translational degrees of freedom for node 2 again are delta X, delta Y, delta Z and theta X, theta Y, theta Z <coughs> are the rotational degrees of freedom. Now, as soon <coughs> as you specify the structure as stat plane, stat would apply a restraint to all the out of plane degrees of freedom. So basically, it would restrain delta y. So it won't allow this node, for example, for node 1, it won't allow node 1 to move in delta y. Sorry. <coughs> it won't allow delta x and delta y are the in plane degrees of freedom. So it won't, so, so it won't allow the node to move in delta z which is the out of plane degrees of freedom. It won't allow this node to rotate in theta y <coughs> and it won't allow this node to rotate in theta z. Similarly for node 2 it won't allow this node to move in delta z and it won't allow the nodes to rotate in theta y and theta z. Now see that <coughs> because <coughs> This is an in-plane structure where the, <clears throat> the geometry, the loading and the response of the structure can be plotted in a single plane. We won't need this out of plane degrees of freedom to come into the equations at all. So this would simplify the structural calculations when you specify this structure as that plane. Because <clears throat> even if you <clears throat> say if you if you define this structure as stat space and you consider all these out of plane degrees of freedom, the result of this, because of an in plane loading <clears throat> and uh, the in plane loading on this structure uh, would result in all, all the out of plane degrees of freedom to be solved as zero. So anyways, it won't make sense. So what we do is <coughs> we restrain those degrees of freedom and save some computational space. In this series, we will learn only about the plane structures. This will be consistent with what you are learning as a first course in structure analysis if you are in an undergraduate course. Moreover, understanding the response of plane structures will help to clarify the fundamental concept which will help you interpret the results of space structure. Further, there is one more reason, because the space structures, a lot of the space structures can be treated and analyzed as plane structures. Today we have learned about a very important concept. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button and press the bell icon for more notifications from this channel.